G'day, it's Tony Burke, the Environment Minister. I'm here in Fremantle today. We've just released the draft plans for marine protection in the southwest, uh, and I'm here with Guy Leyland, who's from the West Australian Fishing Industry Council from WAFIC, and we're having a bit of a look at the implications of the draft plans today and what uh, the impacts will be on the commercial fishing sector. Now, you've had a, a chance today, Guy, to, to get the beginnings of a briefing. Um, if I can ask in the first instance, uh, is what's been presented today seen as being very different to the concerns that were there when the areas for further assessment were first released last year? I think, um, from the point of view of that, I think we're pleasantly surprised in regard to the proposed zoning system, to what we feared based on discussions uh, we had several years ago, particularly with your predecessor. Um, so from that point of view, I think um, we're relatively not happy. But, yep, no, no, but, appreciate but, that. Uh, uh, not as fearful as we okay. might, have, might, have, might have been. Now, we've ended up with, with three sorts of zonings, uh, and I want to work through these sure. maps and <clears> just have a fairly frank conversation of the issues that, that you'll be expecting will be coming to us during this 90-day period of consultation sure. that ends on the 8th of August. <clears throat> now, when these maps come up on the screen, the green-coloured ones are marine national parks. Yes. Now, in those areas, there would be no fishing. Yep. Uh, the dark blue areas, uh, in those ones, the uh, demersal trawl would be knocked out, but other forms of fishing yes. would be allowed. And in the light blue ones, uh, it'd be demersal trawl, demersal gillnet, and demersal longline yes. that'd be knocked out. Uh, but <clears> other <throat> forms of pelagic fishing and the and the like would still be allowed in the light yep. blue zones. Yep. Uh, so, if we have a look at that as we go through the maps, if that's okay, and I presume we'd better keep for your organisation the South Australian maps will steer clear of, and we'll just go through the WA ones. Is that? I think so. I, yeah. I can make some general comments from, okay. um, from the point of view of the Commonwealth and the South Australians, but not setting up specific in terms yeah. of the zones. Okay, <coughs> look, if we start up at the Abrolhos, now here the Abrolhos Islands themselves uh, are within state waters. That's there's, right. there's already some restrictions there, is that right? That's right, yes. There's a number of um, uh, fish protection zones within state waters. Okay, mm. immediately surrounding those, you've got a special purpose zone. Mm. Uh, which knocks out your demersal trawl, yep. and adjacent to that, a multiple use zone, and then a small marine national park right. out there. Now, first of all, the marine national park <coughs> area, um, is that a significant issue, or is the positioning of that one that... From, from the point of view of the state fisheries, um, I don't think it'll have uh, any significant impact. Uh, from the Commonwealth, Western Deepwater Trawl, it might do, but I can't really yep. give a specific comment. Okay, so in, Deepwater Trawl will be yeah, one to yeah. have a look at there. But in terms of the other zones, um, it essentially accommodates lobster fishing. So lobster is is unscathed by this, uh, by that, but um, within that area. Uh, there is an inshore Abrolhos Island scallop fishery, which appears to be um, outside the reserve system, but we need to check that with the operators. Yep. Uh, and there may be a little bit of um, demersal gill net and demersal long line, but again, I think that's accommodated, but I'm, we need to check that with yep. the operators. Okay. And I appreciate, Guy, mm. you know, you've, we've, we've been talking about a range of different maps, but the ones we're looking at sure. today, you've been presented with for the sure. first time today, sure. so uh, it's just a chance to, to have a first glance. Mm. Now, Durian, uh, you've got a... Within state waters again, there's a marine park that's, there that's already. Correct. Does any commercial activity take place in that marine park? Yes, there's a mixture of zones from um, a sanctuary to special purpose, protecting fin fish um, and uh, general use. And I think there's an aquaculture zone within that the state park. Okay, so the, the new area is a special purpose zone which would knock out <coughs> demersal trawling. Yes. Uh, demersal trawling in that area, is uh, is that... A significant part? Are there other forms of fishing that go on there? At the uh, in terms of demersal trawling, um, I'm not aware of any uh, demersal trawling in okay. that area. And are there other forms of commercial fishing that uh, would happen some, outside the marine There, there may be some limited uh, demersal gill net fishing okay. for sharks. Okay. Mm. If, we then go, if we then go to mm. Perth Canyon, uh, everyone seems to have taken a big interest in Perth Canyon sure. for the environmental groups. It's one of their sure. chief iconic <clears> sites. Uh, it's been proposed as a multiple use zone. Can you take me through the significance of, of what currently happens commercially within Perth Canyon and what this might mean? Uh, in terms of that 
particular zone, the only concern I might have is with the metropolitan trawl fishery, but that zone may exclude them. Without seeing the bathymetry, yep. it's hard to, to make a judgement. But we do have a little trawl fishery that operates off Perth. Um, however, in terms of gill netting, you know, the shark fishery, the state government had put in place a closure there some years ago, so clearly they won't be impacted because they're not yep. there. And already, yep. It's already happened because yep. of a state decision. Yep. Okay. Southwest corner. Now, <clears throat> this is one that I think when people first look at the, uh, at the map, <clears throat> there'll be a few people taking a step back because we are talking about one of the biggest marine national parks in the yes. world here. Uh, now, in terms of the area that's been chosen, some of it's been chosen because of its extraordinary depth. Uh, there's areas through here that go six kilometres deep that uh, the full extent of the biodiversity in these areas isn't fully understood yet. Yep. Uh, and so there's some important environmental principles in, in sure. providing protection there. Uh, but all forms, all three different forms of uh, zoning <clears throat> are contained in this map. Can you offer any reflections on it? I think it's, certainly in terms of the size of the green zone, it's quite breathtaking, to say the least. I think, uh, you know, it's huge. Um, that's fairly sobering, I think, in terms of um, the future, in that, um, in effect, the government's saying that that area will be put off limits to any extractive, extractive activity in the future. So, in terms of prospectivity, that removes that potential. Uh, the inshore zones, again, uh, the southwest corner on Jigra Bay, there is a small trawl fishery that operates there, which will be impacted, and there are... Um, what sort of trawling are they doing there? Uh, again, it's little little trawlers, um, primarily focusing on scallop and pinfish and okay. supplying a high quality product to the local markets. Um, it appears it accommodates, in part, the uh, demissile gillnet fishery, but I, again, I need to check that with the yep. operators. Um, yeah, that's about the okay. more comment I'd like to make. Okay, that's if we then go, the Western Recherche mm. is already incorporated within the uh, southwest mm. corner that we've looked at. So if we now go to the Eastern Recherche, uh, and I think there are already some restrictions in this area, is that right? In any of this? Or there's been some fisheries management decisions in this area? Uh, I'm not sure, Are you actually. sure of that? Okay. Minister, I, yeah, there's certainly a blanket trawl closures around the, around the state, which yep. may apply in those areas as well, but... I don't have the detail at the moment. Okay, yeah. well, here the way it's been done, the Marine National Park is very <coughs> much focused on the areas beyond the shelf. Yep. Uh, and then there's a corridor for the Marine National sure. Park that takes it through to the boundary of Commonwealth and state waters. Yep. Uh, any, any reflections on this one? It's, it's hard to say. There may be some... I know the uh, Green Zone transit goes into the... you know, across the shelf and about state waters. There may be some impacts there, but um, again, we'd need to talk to the operators yeah. there because you're really excluding all activities yeah. there. So we need to, to, to talk to the guys down there and to get that assessment. OK, Guy, mm. now, um, we've got this period of consultation now between <coughs> today and the 8th of August. Do you want to just quickly take me through what WAFIC as an organisation sure. will be doing, doing with its members during that time? Sure, we'll be piggybacking on your regional meetings, which will be kicking off in about three weeks' time starting in Geraldton and working its way from Geraldton to Jury and Fremantle, uh, Bunbury, Mug River, uh, Albany and Esperance. So we'll be um, piggybacking on those meetings with uh, our industry, sitting down with them, getting first-hand assessment of the impacts of those zones. Uh, so that'll be the first cut. Following that, where we've identified those impacts more, um, more closely, we'll be then engaging in the socio-economic work, targeted socio-economic work to try and um, quantify those impacts and to engage essentially with your department and ABEAR in regard to putting together those assessments and which may tailor into your um, displacement policy. Okay. Mm. Well Guy, this is a process that's been running for more than a decade in different ways now. It certainly has, yeah. Uh, and certainly I appreciate for many of your members, many people would prefer that it hadn't been initiated in the first sure. place. Uh, but hopefully what you've seen in recent months and what you see in the months to come is at least a level of engagement and consultation that puts us in the best position to deliver the environmental outcome with the minimum possible impact on your membership. Yes, oh, we appreciate that. I think in terms of where we were several years ago, as I said, you know, we're a long way ahead than where we were some time ago. So we're, we're grateful for that. I'm grateful for your engagement with the industry and it's been quite genuine. 
Um, I might add um, one of the things we'll be focusing on in terms of our engagement with the industry and with your department during this 90 day period is trying to, um, particularly now we have the focus of the industry on these zones, um, possibly coming up with some alternative zoning schemes that minimise the impact, economic impact on those industries but maintaining uh, your objectives in terms of biodiversity conservation. So we look forward to working, working no, through that, that process. With that's you. exactly what the consultation's about. Yep. So, Guy, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. No, pleasure.